as I mentioned, we really have to go through the physics, so bear on me for a few slides because it, it's important to understand how the device works. Uh, Galionitride is a 3.5 material, and in particular, it's a free nitride material, uh, which, um, uh, as you can see, the galionitride is in group three, the, the GAN is uh, in group three, and the nitride is in group five, therefore, the 3.5 uh, material. Um, what we have on the right hand side of the, of the slide is the um, crystal uh, structure of the, of the gallium nitride. You have two possibilities according to the direction of the growth of the material. You have uh, GA phase um, um, crystal lattice and N phase, which means nothing more than, um, which is the uh, atom which sits at the top of the crystal lattice. It is important to make this difference because um, we won't work with gas phase materials because they will give us channels uh, in uh, electrons, which is what we want. You'll understand in a while why. So you have these two possibilities. The structure is a good size crystal structure, as I mentioned, gas phase and N phase. And um, uh, these are the directions just by uh, for convention. So um, why, why, why is it so special, the gallium nitride, and in particular the three uh, nitride materials? They're special because, um, and uh, in this they differ from the other three five materials, such as, for example, gallium arsenide. They have a property which is called spontaneous polarization. This spontaneous polarization derives from the fact that the bonds between the atoms of gallium and nitrogen are polar, and the structure that we've seen, uh, that we have here, is, um, is non-centrosymmetric, uh, which means it lacks of a center of uh, symmetry. So what we have is that because of the way in which these atoms are within the crystal uh, lattice, they have an internal electric field which is intrinsic of the material, and that's why it's, it's called spontaneous polarization. It doesn't depend on anything else, but the, uh, the way in which the atoms are uh, organized in the crystal lattice. So we have, as I said, an internal electric field and a spontaneous polarization. Um, now we have to focus a little bit on the heterojunctions. Since you know what they are, I'll uh, try not to spend too much time on, on this slide. Uh, the heterojunction is, in general, uh, um, in, in, you obtain a, a heterojunction uh, with an interface between two materials with a similar band gap. Uh, what it is important to uh, look at when we are um, talking about the heterojunctions is the band gap versus lattice constant plot, which is what you have here for different materials. And uh, there are two things which are important to look at. First, we want a band gap discontinuity between the two layers because this will change the uh, electrical properties of the, of the device we are, uh, we are fabricating, we are designing. The second, we don't want the, the, the lattice mismatch between these two layers. It's too big. Because associated to a lattice mismatch, as you can see in this slide, it, it's pretty intuitive, but this picture uh, gives you the idea of that. Associated to that lattice mismatch, you have the formation of these locations, which are electrical uh, defects um, that affect the performance of the device. So you don't want them. Uh, in other words, what uh, what we want is um, a heterojunction, ideally a heterojunction with a big band gap discontinuity, but a small lattice uh, constant mismatch. And if you look at the gallium nitride, aluminum nitride, it, uh, it gives us exactly what we want. So going from GAN to aluminum nitride, you have a big uh, this gap, uh, band gap discontinuity and the lattice constant is, uh, mismatch is um, um, contained. Um, so the advantages of these algan gan heterostructures is therefore the, what, what we mentioned. Uh, how do we create it? Uh, we create it with a, a layer of algan on top of a layer of gan. The layer of algan aluminum gallium nitride is uh, obtained with value of um, aluminum mole fraction in between uh, 0 and 1. Actually for 0 we obtain GAN, because it means zero aluminum concentration in the, in the layer. And for values of one, you obtain the aluminum. aluminum. So anything in between gives you the algan uh, layer. Now, the properties of this algan layer will depend on the value of that aluminum concentration. So it's a very crucial parameter to, um, to know and to uh, keep under control. 
Uh, how do we um, calculate the properties of the algal layer? The, the, easier, the easier way is to look at the, uh, just, just through linear interpolation, which is the first equation you have here. If prop stands for properties, then you linearly interpolate the property of the aluminum nitride with the one of the gun, and you obtain the one of the algal. Um, in literature, you can find an uh, interpolation that uses a Boeing parameter, and these are pretty much derived by uh, experimental um, um, uh, experimental results. So there is nothing very well defined regarding the value of this uh, Bohr parameter. It's something you measure and you extrapolate. Uh, heterojunction. Um, this is how the, it looks if they are not in contact. The algangan heterojunction is uh, called the type 1 of straddling heterojunction. There is not too much to know about that if uh, not that the band gap of the smaller band gap semiconductor uh, is in, uh, within the band gap of the wide band gap semiconductor. That's what defines this kind of heterojunction. Um, what happens when we put these layers in contact? It's something else that we have to know because, as I mentioned, they have different lattice constants. It's true that the mismatch is not very big, but there is still a mismatch between the two layers, between the lattice constants. So because of the strain or uh, tensile strain or compressive strain according to uh, which layer goes on top, you have uh, the, 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 the electrostatic equilibrium is, uh, is broken. And because of that, you have a uh, polarization, and an, intern an internal electric field which uh, gives a polarization. This polarization is called piezoelectric polarization, and is the result of the strain between the layers. So we have two polarizations so far, the spontaneous, given by the nature of the, of the crystal lattice, and the piezoelectric polarization, which is given by the fact that we are putting two layers with different uh, lattice constants, one on top of each other, two layers with specific properties which is uh, the piezoelectric polarization. Um, you don't have to really know where this equation uh, comes from because it goes too much into uh, material science properties, so I won't spend too much time on that. What it is important to know is that if PVE is the piezoelectric polarization we just mentioned, this depends on the uh, uh, lattice constant mismatch and depends on some coefficients, which are the piezoelectric constant, elastic constant. So the elastic constant is almost intuitive, again, because you are trying to match two layers and either uh, through strain or, or compressing the two. So that's why there is this relation. And the piezoelectric constant, this is important because you could say, then, why I don't see the same in all gas, gas uh, heterostructures? And this is because of the values of these coefficients, which are quite um, high for uh, three nitride, uh, group three nitride materials. Uh, again, just a notice that these are the constants it depends uh, on, and also it depends on the x, the value of the aluminum mole fraction. Uh, this is a plot which tells you the fact, um, again, if you plot those values as a function of x, you see that there is a dependence on the aluminum mole fraction. But uh, again, don't spend too much time on this. What it is important to know is that um, when you have a gradient in the polarization, and this is what you have in this equation, uh, associated to the gradient in polarization is a charge. A charge which is called polarization induced uh, charge or simply polarization charge for because uh, it's faster to say. Um, so when the two layers are not in contact, this is how it looks like. You have spontaneous polarization in algon and gun. Then you put them in contact and you create a um, piezoelectric uh, polarization in the algon. The difference between the two polarizations, so the difference between the polarization of the bottom layer and the one of the top layer gives you a positive charge. Now, it, it is important to notice that we have a positive charge only if it's a gas phase material. If we had an N phase material, we would have um, a negative charge. And here you have all the possible uh, combinations indeed. What we are looking at is this one. So we have algan tensile strain grown on top of a gun relaxed. And because the gun is relaxed, then we have only a spontaneous polarization of the gun, while because you have strain in the algan, you have a piezoelectric and spontaneous polarization. If you look uh, at this, uh, what you have on the right hand side, 
you, you can see the end pace uh, situations and you see that for an equivalent uh, growing process you have a negative polarization charge. So um, why are we um, so much interested into having a positive polarization charge? Uh, the reason is because uh, when you have a high uh, positive polarization charge, then you attract electrons, and we want to have an electron-based uh, uh, channel, electron-based channel device. So this is what happens. You have a two-dimensional electron gas. This is how it is called, because it's confined into this quantum well, which is creating, uh, created at the hetero interface. And uh, the reason why you have a high density of electron in the channel is because of this high uh, value of polarization charge uh, uh, at, the, at the interface. In some of the structures, you will have another layer of gun uh, on top of the algon. You will see uh, later why. And in this case, in here, you have a negative polarization uh, charge. But uh, we'll focus on that later. Um, where this uh, charge comes from. You have an equation which looks uh, complicated, but it is not, because it's simply the solution of the Poisson or the Poisson equation or uh, goes uh, law according to how, how you call it. I think it has both names. And uh, this is the polarization charge. And this is practically the uh, uh, electric field or energy, actually, energy from this point to until the two deck. So you are actually uh, calculating the gradient of the, of, the, um, of the potential from a Schottky barrier contact to the two deck. And uh, you can calculate the, the charge because the Poisson equation is the derivative of the electric field is equal to the charge over the dielectric constant. Um, so just to look at some numbers, because these are important, if the blue, uh, light blue line is, uh, is the polarization charge, you see it depends on X, which is aluminum of fraction, the charge in the two-dimensional uh, electron gas follows that dependence. You see it in the question indeed, follows that dependence, and it depends, and this is very important, on the thickness of the algon layer. The thicker the algon layer, the uh, the lower the the, the higher the, um, the two deg uh, density is. And if we look at the numbers, we are talking for aluminum fraction of the order of 0.2, which is a general uh, common value. We are looking at uh, 1 e 13 per centimeter square electrons in the channel, which is a very high concentration. And so far, we haven't mentioned any doping. So it's just because you have these polarization charges that you attract so many electrons in the channel. Uh, if you include a cup layer, which is the top gun layer I was mentioning before, the value of this two deck concentration decreases according to this plot. And uh, this gives you, it's, it gives you a trade-off between the leakage current and the onset resistance because the reason why you put that cup layer is to stop the current going through, through, the, through the gate. And, uh, but uh, increasing the, the two deck density, you uh, increase also the onset resistance. And from here, the trade-off comes.